every type of wireless redstone. Now, wireless redstone is a bit of a vague term, so for the sake of today's video, I'm defining wireless redstone as any way to cause an active redstone signal to bridge a gap with no blocks in between. I'll be focusing on the most practical types that you can use in survival without any type of glitch. Let's get into it! Now starting off real basic, we have the new skulk sensor blocks. I mean, these are very straightforward. Really, their whole purpose is redstone. I mean, wireless redstone. A apart from, you know, they help summon the warden, but really, it's wireless redstone, right? Because they transmit sound between gaps. So if I just make a noise, now if I make a noise like stepping, it's not really going to be loud enough over the longer distances. But if I place a block, that'll do it. And you can see the light turned on, so... Wireless redstone, uh, as basic as it gets, folks. Now, still keeping things pretty simple, we got a target block and we got a comparator on the back. And then we got a dispenser here with some arrows. So, when a target block gets shot, it actually will trigger a comparator attached to it. So, if I just press this button, bang, you see the light turns on. So, pretty simple. I mean, you can set this up pretty much however, uh, however you want. Even vertically, downwards, whatever direction you need. As long as it can hit the target block, you can get some wireless redstone out of it. Now moving up in complexity just a little bit, to be honest it looks worse than it is, uh, we got what I would consider basically redstone basketball. And the way this works, right, we got a TNT cannon and we got a piston with some sand. What happens when I press this button is first of all the TNT cannon lights and then after a delay this piston will push some sand out and it's timed just right to mess up on the first try. It works like 90% of the time, you might have some finickiness, but uh, there you go. And now the light's on, right? So the block fell, and it hit these trip wires, and turned on the light. Pretty easy. Speaking of easy, this is about as basic of wireless redstone as you can get. This mechanic, I mean, it's been around since the beginning of time. It is kind of limited, it has to be vertical, but, uh, you know, it gets the job done, and this will be the easiest wireless redstone apart from the skulk sensors. Well, they're not there anymore, but... Uh, this will be the easiest wireless redstone you can ever do. I mean, it's it's just a dispenser with some items, press the button, drops down the funnel, hits the pressure plate, boom. Easy as that. Now we got minecarts to actually do some wireless redstone. Now this is pretty similar to the last one, right? Well, I mean, we're following the same principle. It's an entity instead of an item. Well, I mean, items are entities, but you get what I mean. It's a minecart instead of just an item. Uh, the benefit to this way of doing it is you do have a little bit of horizontal range versus just a straight down shaft like you have over there. Uh, I can just press this and it follows the ramp and then it will land on those detector rails and turn on the light. So, I mean, not probably the most useful thing, but there's certainly use cases. Now this one, this one's probably up there as one of my favorites, right? Because we're basically going to use mob AI to do wireless redstone. So, uh... First of all, if I get a zombie in here, and I can actually, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I can open a gate with a redstone torch. What happens when the gate opens is this zombie, he's going to want that guy real bad, and he's going to go right across this gap and go right onto the pressure plate. So if I do that, there he goes, and the light's on. Really pretty simple. I mean, there's a number of ways to apply it. The thing is, you do need mobs that are attracted to other mobs. I mean, other options, maybe you could use like an ocelot and a, and a creeper, but that's a repelling situation. I think this just makes the most sense. It's probably the easiest to do. So if you're going to do wireless redstone this way, which I think is a pretty cool way, this is probably your more ideal general setup. So not too bad. Pretty easy. And then lastly, we got probably mm, one of the least practical ones, but certainly one of the more cool ones. Um, it's very, very simple in principle, right? We got an ice block, we got a little funnel that goes down to this observer, and we got this little lamp post over here with a lamp. What this will do is it'll melt the ice when I turn on this lamp. Now, you might be thinking, oh, sunlight, won't that, won't that do that? Can't we just get false positives? No, sunlight actually does not melt ice. Only block emitted light will do that. So if I turn this on and we wait a while, uh, and by the way, just to add to that, you need a light level on one of the adjacent blocks to the ice. It needs to be more than 11, so you need 12 or higher. And if you just wait a while, this will uh, this will eventually melt. Hey, there we go. I was just setting up a long-term shot. But what's so cool about this, uh, I think probably the most practical use case is you kind of get a random timing generator out of this. There's not a lot of good options for good randomization in Minecraft, 
But the thing is, when you when you turn this on, it chooses a random time for this to melt, so it's kind of a random delay, which could have some really nice uses in redstone. And that's what we got for today. Now, I mean, again, not every form of wireless redstone is here, but generally all the ones that you're going to have any practical fun time and survival using, that's, that's pretty much about all I could really find. I have a story-driven survival series where I explore some of the coolest, most advanced data packs out there. In this last one, I found a colony on Mars. Check it out, it's on the screen right now. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!